10 questions, many of which you're going to miss. It's almost impossible to get 100%. Or is it? This is going to be very fast paced. I read each question, then I give you the answer. If you need a little bit of thinking time, make sure you hit the pause button while I'm reading the question. After I give you the answer, I give a short 30 second explanation and a little bit of historical context. I guarantee you, you're going to learn some things. And make sure you watch all the way to the end. Some of the more challenging questions are towards the end. Are you ready? Let's go. Who is the oldest candidate to be elected president? William Harrison, Ronald Reagan, Donald Trump, or Joe Biden? The answer is Joe Biden. William Harrison held the record for 139 years. He was 68 years of age when he got elected. In fact, he also passed away an, a, a month later after his inauguration. But in 1980, Ronald Reagan broke the record again. He was 69 years of age. Then in 2016, Donald Trump broke the record at 70 years of age. And then in 2020, Joe Biden broke the record at 77 years of age. And in 2024, if Joe Biden is reelected president of the United States, he'll set a new record at 81 years of age. Which U.S. president served two non-consecutive terms? Grover Cleveland, Franklin Roosevelt, Teddy Roosevelt, or Dwight Eisenhower? The answer is Grover Cleveland. You know, we've had a handful of presidents attempt to get back into the White House after they left office, and all four of them have failed. In 2024, Donald Trump is going to attempt to be the first ex-president since Cleveland to get reelected and get back in the White House. Who was the only U.S. president to pay off the national debt? Was it Grover Cleveland, Thomas Jefferson, Bill Clinton, or Andrew Jackson? The answer is Andrew Jackson. With all the discussion in the news recently about the national debt and the Congress raising our debt ceiling limit, uh, this is a very appropriate question. Andrew Jackson, when he took office, the national debt was $58 million. And six years later, he managed to help pay off the entire national debt. It's the only time that's ever happened in our nation's history. And it was really because of some of his reforms and because he had the ability and took the opportunity to veto wasteful spending. What U.S. president was elected to four terms in office? George Washington, Franklin Roosevelt, Thomas Jefferson, or Theodore Roosevelt? The answer is Franklin Roosevelt. You know, George Washington was the one who set the precedent of just serving two terms as president. And that was really followed for about 151 years until 1940 when Franklin Roosevelt ran for a third term. In fact, then in 1944, he ran for a fourth term and won. And that primarily was because of the Great Depression and because we were in the middle of World War II still. But 1951, the 22nd Amendment was passed, which limits a president to just serving two terms in office. Who is the only U.S. president to have won re-election with no challenge from their own party and no challenge from the opposition party? Was it James Madison, James Monroe, John Tyler, or James Garfield? The answer is James Monroe. In 1820, James Monroe ran for re-election. He had no challenge from anyone in his own party and no challenge from the Federalist Party, which was the opposition party at the time. It really was a party that was dying off. And Monroe received almost 100% of a unanimous vote in the Electoral College. There was one elector from New Hampshire, his name was William Plummer, who deliberately voted for John Quincy Adams on purpose. And that was to allow George Washington to hold the distinction of being the only U.S. president in American history to have a 100% unanimous vote in the Electoral College. Who's the only U.S. president to have never run on a ticket as a president or as a vice president? Was it Franklin Pierce, James Polk, Gerald Ford, or John Tyler? The answer is Gerald Ford. In 1973, Richard Nixon appointed Gerald Ford to be his new vice president. That was because Spiro Agnew, his other, his first vice president, had to resign because of charges of tax evasion. Well, just a year later, 1974, Nixon himself decided to resign as president because of the overwhelming evidence that was being compiled against him because of the Watergate scandal, and he didn't want to be the first president removed from office. And then Gerald Ford became president. He's the only U.S. president 
to have never been elected. How many U.S. presidents have died in office? Is it six, seven, eight, or nine? The answer is eight. We've had four die from unnatural causes and four actually be assassinated. You know, and statistically, being U.S. president is one of the most dangerous jobs there is in the United States. We've had 34% of our presidents be targets of assassination and 9% have been assassinated. What U.S. presidents refer to as the father of the Constitution, is it George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, John Adams, or James Madison? The answer is James Madison. There's nothing impressive about James Madison's appearance. He was our shortest president at five foot four inches. He didn't weigh much more than 100 pounds, but he was an intellect. And he made a big impact at the Constitutional Convention with the crafting of the U.S. Constitution. That's why we call him the father of the Constitution. And he later was instrumental in giving us the Bill of Rights, which helped ensure passage or ratification of the Constitution. And a lot of the rights that we enjoy today, the freedom of speech, the freedom of press, religion, right to bear arms, trial by jury, we all have one person to thank, and that's Mr. Madison. What U.S. president is the only person to get elected who had the least amount of electoral votes? Was it John Quincy Adams? Was it Millard Fillmore? Was it Martin Van Buren? or Ulysses S. Grant? The answer is John Quincy Adams. You know, in, in the election of 1824, there was a deadlock in the Electoral College. Andrew Jackson, John Quincy Adams, Henry Clay, and William Crawford all running for president. Jackson had the most electoral votes and the most and the popular votes, but he didn't have enough electoral votes to put him over the threshold. The Constitution says when you have a deadlock, the U.S. House of Representatives settles the issue. And Henry Clay, Speaker of the House, he dropped out of the race. He cut a deal privately with John Adams, John Quincy Adams, and he throws his support behind John Quincy Adams. And John Quincy Adams is a chosen elected president. And ironically enough, Clay is later appointed Secretary of State, which was really a stepping stone at that time to the presidency. What U.S. president was not impeached? Andrew Johnson, Richard Nixon, Bill Clinton, or Donald Trump? The answer is Richard Nixon. Andrew Johnson was the first that was impeached in U.S. history by his own party. Bill Clinton was the second by the Republican Party for lying under oath, obstruction of justice. Donald Trump was the third person impeached. In fact, Donald Trump holds the distinction of being the only U.S. president to have been impeached twice by a Democratic House for abuse of power, obstruction of justice, incitement to uh, insurrection. But the word impeach doesn't mean removed from office like most people think. It just simply means to bring charges against. And so in the early 1970s here, the House was compiling evidence against Richard Nixon to begin articles of impeachment, but Nixon decided instead to resign because he didn't want to be impeached and he didn't want to be the first president in U.S. history to be removed from office. Once you're done, do me a favor, drop in the comment section and let me know what your score was. Did you get 7 out of 10? Or are you one of those one percenters who got 10 out of 10? If you liked our presidential trivia today and you got some value from it, hit the like button for us. And if you haven't joined our Press Politics family yet, hit the subscribe button now. And you know what? You need to check out some of the other videos we have on our channel by clicking these links.